Kendo Castaneda. Kendo Castaneda in the black, purple, and orange FedEx color-inspired trunks, where he works a full-time job. And Jose Zapata in the blue trunks. And as you see right away, Zapata is a southpaw, fighting with that right hand out in front. Castaneda is listed as a right-handed fighter, but in fact, he does switch, Chris. Yeah, he, he will switch at times. He's uh, he's really a, a come-forward kind of banger guy. He wants to trade and mix up, and sometimes gets ahead of himself when stepping into the other stance, but it's comfortable there. If you want to add some crowd noise to our main event, you can log on to ESPN.HearMeHear.com and add some noise that they will filter in there to the MGM Grand Conference Center, and uh, you can cheer along with other fans for our main event. So. Yeah, go ahead and help these fighters out. Give, yeah. them, give them a little bit more to fight for. Something new for both of these guys fighting with, with no fans. Good straight left hand. Nice left hand from Zepeda here in round one. We talked about the jab of Zepeda. Uh, he's very effective working that right jab against righties. In fact, it's probably one of his more dominating and, uh, I would say, defining punches, Chris. Yeah, he, he'll, he'll use it as the start of a round to win rounds, get control. But really what he's doing is range finding for that straight left hand. Once he really zones in and is able to land left hand, that's when he really will let go of combination punches. He's a beautiful combination puncher, uh, but it all starts with the jab. Kendo Castaneda said he's fought a bunch of left lefties in his career. And uh, as an amateur, feels very comfortable in the ring against lefties and said, look, I'm the best kept secret at 140 pounds. All these guys are afraid to fight each other. All the guys are afraid to put their records up against each other. I'll fight anyone. I took this fight on the week's notice. I'm ready. Very confident coming in against the former uh, world title challenger. Good job changing the levels there on that jab from Zapata and then throwing the left hand. That's one thing that Sean is so good at. He, he's able to link his punch with the other. He'll land one, then add one to it, then add one to it, add one to it. He doesn't have to think ahead of combinations like, I'm going to throw a one, two, three. He, a lot of times he reacts. He's a very reactive uh, boxer. Boxer puncher. Yeah, and he has really good movement, too. That helps with that reaction yeah. time. Yeah, good footwork, good in and out. He said he learned a lot from that fight with... Uh, Jose Ramirez, uh, primarily his confidence level and his body language. Uh, he's got a piece of that. I got to believe that I can win those fights. And Jose really buckled down and, and pulled away tough. And I kind of gave it away in the later ah. changing my style, going in there and boxing aggressively when I was doing well in the beginning of that fight, boxing off the jab. He also has some fears about finishing. Oh, oh. Good lead left hand there from Castaneda. As Castaneda now switches to southpaw. He switched a few times in the yeah, first back round. And forth. Did not have much success in, in, in either stance. Sean has been controlling everything with the, the distance. You know, the combination punches when he does feel like ripping them off. But for the most part, it's been all Sean's right jab as he's controlling the space. Combination just misses there from Cepeda. Who do you think that the slower pace favors, Chris? I would say Sean because of his experience and his ability to use his eyes and his feet plus his length. But honestly, I think if the speed picks up, that Sean's power is going to show as well. Um, I think he's the bigger puncher. I think he's the faster puncher. I think he's the more experienced fighter. So uh, it's really, uh, Sean is going to be good inside, outside, fast, slow. Pretty much he can do it all, yeah. is what you're saying. Well, I, I think I, in this matchup, I'm, yeah. I'm talking about specifically. Yeah. And in all fairness, I mean, there is levels to, to this sport, and Castaneda has not faced anybody uh, the level of experience um, and just the level of fighter that Zapata is. Um, and when you kind of are fighting and making matches during a pandemic and you have last minute injuries, it's hard enough to find a, an opponent to, to, to schedule a fight to begin with. But as we've seen numerous times, people have had injuries or test positive for either PEDs or COVID-19, and a lot of things have changed on short notice. Uh, 
and that's why we're not getting the quality of opponent here in our main event as, as we would have had um, Ivan Branchek not got hurt. That's just what it is. But as people on Twitter say, don't sleep on Castaneda. He's a good puncher. He's got solid skills. It's just that he's not fought the level of competition that Cepeda has. Well, he's got his, he's got his opportunity to show it. He sounded very confident on the call. Absolutely, for sure. But um, it's confidence on the call is one thing. Confidence in the ring when you have a, a, a top five fighter in the world in front of you is a whole different thing. Holding his own so far and landing a couple good shots to the body there. Ah! Like six different spots on my left <laughs> eye, he said. So I, mean, I was like, oh, I guess you're building scar tissue all the way around. Under the eye, over the eye, eyebrow, forehead. I forgot just said prone that. That, to that. That was funny. I mean, I guess he's on to something. It's not like he's breaking open the same scar tissue all the time. And he hasn't um, had an eye injury in terms of like an orbital bone being shattered or whatever. It's been all, you know, superficial cuts. What are you trying to say? Just because I, I, I don't know. I just think it's, di it's different. No, it's definitely very different. It's different recovery, too. Good uppercut there on the inside from Kendo. Kendo it's hard for me to say Kendo without saying Tremendo. Yeah, you just want to put it. You can. Yeah, no one says you can't. Kendo needs to pick up his punch output here as it looks like he's getting off to a better start here in round three. Yeah, being a little more aggressive. Yeah, he, he's a good size. He is a you know, tall, doesn't have long arms as you can tell. You can actually see his, his arm length is not very long, but uh, he is tall for the weight. And speaking of the weight, uh, the catch weight for this fight was 144 pounds. It's a little high considering uh, Zepeda and his championship fights have all been at 140. So it, it was interesting to see who those extra pounds were going to benefit, if it was going to benefit Castaneda or Zepeda in this fight. Well, in fact, Zepeda's first title fight against uh, Terry Flanagan, uh, I believe it was at 135. 35, 135, correct. Yeah. Yep. So this is, you know, Chun has not been in this weight class for very long. The majority of his career has been at 35. Speaking about the cuts of, of Zepeda, I, uh, I had Sean in, in camp with me as a sparring partner getting ready for Manny Pacquiao, and he had to go and actually take a fight in in Mexico while we were in camp, and I was so afraid that he was going to get cut and not be able to come to camp, <laughs> come back to camp. You're like, don't get hurt. I still need you. Yeah, we're not, we're not these, done yet. I need these southpaws. <laughs> yeah. Some good work. I mean, it seems like Castaneda does some good work once they get inside, but... And, but Zepeda is confident and comfortable in, in keeping him at that mid-range distance and moving around the outside. Castaneda, you get the feeling that he'd like to fight to be in a little bit more of a closer range. As Zepeda lands some nice combinations there. Yeah, and you can tell, Sean, like, he's he's got he's getting the better of on the outside. He can fight on the inside, but it gives Kendo a chance. So why give the man a chance? Sean fighting very measured, very smart. Body, straight left hand to the body. Oh, and another good left hand there as he catches Castaneda with his hands down. Great punch variation, high, low, mixing up the levels. Down to the body there with the left hand as Castaneda shoots the uppercut. Good. Lima work his way back into the fight and. You know, here, it's kind of the other way around. He just hasn't got off to a great start. He's got to give himself a chance by mixing it up, trying to bring in Zepeda, try to get him to engage with him. And there he goes with a good right hand to start round four. Yeah, tri Kendo likes to fight on the inside. He likes to push the action. He likes to tree. He likes to fight. He's a fighter. He likes to, he likes to mix it up. He said those exact words himself. You can see it. You know, that's, that's, from looking at the tape, that's just the way that he fights. That's his, that's his mentality. Yep. He's like, let's go. Let's get it on. Let's have some fun. I want to bring classic fights. Everyone's a, a scared to fight each other. Everyone's scared to fight. Yeah, but he's learning not that not every fighter needs to fight all the time. And you got to measure El Matador like we have in terms of us, in front of us with Cepeda. Picking his spots using his jab, keeping range, using his eyes. Notice how open Zepeda's eyes are. He's seeing everything coming in, analyzing. 
we've had now three weeks or three uh yeah three weeks in a row where we've had a 140 pounder in our main event we've had um alex salcedo we've had uh, jose pedraza and now we have jose zapeda and don't think for a second these guys aren't at home when they're not the ones and they're watching the other guys at 140 pounds seeing what they can do any of these guys are all top ranked fighters and could be mixing it up uh quite soon as that as we showed you that essay by my mark Kriegel about how talented that 140 pound division is and it is kind of a letdown that zapeda didn't get that shot at brunchick right now but he said that I'm not letting it get me down too much because i know that that fight will come and that's a totally different type of preparation than against a guy like this Body work from Zapata has been really good. First half of this round, he's got he's got Castaneda on his back foot now. Something we're not used to seeing from him, but what I've seen from Tate, he's the kind of guy who always wants to come forward. Some good shots to the body from Zapata. Good work on the inside. Just one shot at a time, Chris. One shot. Oh. Yeah, Kassan is really just, he's just letting Sean dictate the pace, set things up. Mm. Good right hand there by Zapata. Zapata's accuracy has been on point. He's not throwing a lot of punches, but he's being very efficient when he does let his hands go. No, he's not wasting anything. Not exactly. Perfect way to put not wasting any punches. Ah! The horizon, Chris, do you? I sure have. Um, okay, so that's fair, right? You, say, oh, you want to look past an opponent, but um, that that would be a, a, a pretty big setback because I, I have a feeling that that fight with Branchek will be rescheduled sooner rather than later. Not a big serious injury, just something that maybe pushed it back a little bit. I've actually had that happen to me. I got cut in a fight um, and it pushed back another fight that I was supposed to have three months, but it worked out because I ended up fighting on the Andy Ruiz and uh, Anthony Joshua. Fight. Yeah, so that, that, yeah that, that worked out, worked out. your favor. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I hope that works out for Zapata too, if he does. Um, get a win here against Castaneda but look it's been a summer of upsets we've seen quite a few of them on these cards we just saw one in our last fight again with Andy Ventis and uh, Luis Alberto Lopez and you saw that with Coria and Maloney and you saw it with uh, Josh Greer and uh, why am I blanking on his name uh, uh, I'm, dr I'm drawing a blank too uh, <laughs> with the with the Filipino Plania. fighter Plenius yep. thank Plania. you um, uh, so it's it's it, it has happened. It does happen. And it does this happen. This is boxing, theater of the unexpected. So you gotta be all in, and I'm sure Zapata is, but it's just something that I was thinking about, looking forward to that top 10 matchup between those two. Because I really wanna see that fight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. no, it's a, it's, a, it's a really, I mean, anytime you got guys in the top 10 fighting each other, uh, and two guys who literally, both of them could be world champions, mm -hmm. and that's, that's the kind of fight you wanna see. <laughs> And it's great when you do that, then the winner hopefully gets a title fight after that or right. look that much closer. And you have two deserving guys. Neither one Absolutely. of them could fight for a world title. Absolutely. In fact, they both have. And there's a lot that can happen up there at the top of the division, too. Baranchak um, lost to, to Josh Taylor, and uh, Zapata lost to Ramirez. Ramirez. Yeah, so, you know. Those, those and then Ramirez, those, and, and, but Ramirez has a fight or a mandatory on one of his in, in, in fighting Victor Postal, which he would have probably liked to move past. No, stop, stop, stop. Let him off. Taylor, considering that fight has been postponed two times already. Well, Postal is no walkover. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but he can't. No, it's a very, very tough, uh, he's a very tough out for anyone. Postal is, he's got a, a tough style. Long, very, very tall for the weight class. Good experience. Southpaw. Body shot. Beautiful. Nice with the, the left hand. I like how Sean is, is kind of countering with hooks and uppercuts and, and combinations, not just one shot at a time. Closing the distance a bit here is Zapata, choosing to fight a little bit more stop, stop, stop. close yes, range come on. Come on. near the end of round five. Good body work there. He needs to do more of that. He needs to let his hands go warm. I like what Sean does. Those are one, two, and then pushes off, keeps that distance. Good body taking on both sides from Zapata. Good 
push ahead there. I'm Kendo does some good. Here we go, round six, second half of the fight now. Christina Poncher and Chris Algieri here with you. Chris, it's been awesome having you here next to me for these fights, particularly all these 140 oh, no. pound fights, because you just showed me a sparring picture of you and, and Zepeda. So you know firsthand what That's these so guys can do in the ring, as that is a weight division you spent a lot of your career. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I know Chon quite well, not only from, from sparring, I mean, probably 60, 70 plus rounds with him in a training camp. Um, but also, you know, we, I, I speak to him quite regularly about, about training and about diet and things like that. So it's good to see him out here performing at his best. Yeah, he's looking really good tonight. Not, not doing too much, not even having to really overexert himself, being uh, efficient. Uh, with his shots and moving around the outside boxing the in for the exchanges right back out on the move around the outside yeah pot shotting quite well um but a guy like kendo you know he's tough he's, he's a rough guy you can't just hit him with single shots and look to really do any damage he's going to just keep coming forward um you got to systematically break a guy like him down <laughs> Do you think he's doing that? I don't. I don't. I don't think he's putting enough hurt on Kendo in order to do that. Um, you know, like I said, he, he, he's boxing well. He's pot shotting. He's landing good shots here and there. But it, it's not enough. You know, Kendo is 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 too tough to just be uh, get get hurt by shots like they're broken down by shots like this. That's a good chopping left hand from Kendo. You can even see in the body language of of, of Kendo. He's not he's not deterred by stop, what's stop, coming stop. at him. Yeah. Here we go. I did expect more out of Castaneda, especially after speaking to him yesterday yeah, on the call. Um, he was a very energetic guy in terms of his talk, his speak, uh, his speaking, and uh, you know, he's just not that energetic in the ring tonight. No, 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 no. I'll do that. Oh, a good Here right hand landed on the inside from Castaneda, but you know what's also um, difficult is when you have a guy like Zepeda who. Um, is able to do this for a living and do it at a high level and gets to focus on this year round And then you have a guy like Castaneda who is not afforded that luxury and has to work a full-time job says I work military hours I'm up at 3 a.m. I'm off work at 9 or 10 a.m. Get in a nap and then try to hit to the boxing gym um, Lock him up. You see you see the difference and when and it's just such a catch-22 because in order to get to that level You almost need to commit to it fully before you even probably make enough money to be able to do so and that's That's difficult and he explained that, you know, to us in, in his situation every day. It's an unfortunate reality of this, of this sport. Ah! Um, you know, the money's not there. Until Untelevised undercard, um, otherwise, in a different uh, day and time. So, If I was coming up, I would be ecstatic about this because I would have the opportunity to fight on TV early in no. my career. Show everybody what you work so hard for. Um, let people get to know you build your fan base early i mean a lot of fighters try to do that on their own home turf and with their own local promoters build your fan base and then travel out but um guys like uh even who we saw tonight murataya in our first fight being able in his third and fourth professional fight to fight on national television start to gain yourself a gain a thousand followers overnight he's build your fan a, base on television he's becoming a summer series star <laughs> <laughs> i like that summer series star oh we were going like bubble bubble star yeah no, summer, S that, summer series good. star i like summer that summer series sounds way better I think we should do, um, until our producer, Marty Corwin, we need a, a segment on summer series stars. Better than a COVID champion. Yeah. Or, or a quarantine king or something <laughs> silly like that. Ooh, nice swing, a, a miss from Zepeda, ripping that left uppercut. Castaneda picking up the activity level here in round seven, perhaps uh, later than he should have, but... I'd like you to see Sean try and him. make a statement here. You want him to step on it yeah, a little I do, bit, right? I do. I want, I I want to see him uh, you yeah. know, pick up the pace. And ooh, got him with a good right hand there from, from Castaneda. You know. Maybe put a, put that 140-pound division on notice. I mean, Jose did that. Uh, Jose, I say that. Like, Jose Pedraza yes. uh, against uh, Mikel de Pierre as Castaneda lands a good left hand there. But show everybody uh, why you did that interview and, and, and said that you believe that you're right underneath Ramirez and Taylor. Yeah, I'm sorry. A, guy, I agree. Say, I say a guy like this has no business in the ring with you. And here's why. Okay. 
That's on the belt. Ooh, good combination landed by Castaneda. Chone letting uh, Castaneda get some licks in here. Yeah, he's starting to bring it. I, I, I'm, I'm going to think that no matter what happens, that Castaneda is going to think that he should have started this earlier. <laughs> Ooh, Down well. to the body. That one looked low. The other one they said was on the belt line, but that right hand on the inside. Right on the money. Yeah, the, money, <laughs> the, money the money symbol on exactly. his front. <laughs> you were picking up what I was putting down. I got it. I got it. I, I, had, to let, sure. I had to let the, uh, let the butt home just in case they missed it. <laughs> of course, you don't see the money sign on the trunks and what I was referring to because it's back and straight towards us, but. Much better round from uh, Tremendous. I think he landed a body shot that uh, Oh, and John, a good right hand there, too. Sean Phil. Well, that Probably the stop, most stop. Uh, punch activity that he's had in the entire fight as well. Ha! Show that, to show that killer instinct. To show that I can put somebody out when I need to. And I've spoke to Tim about this as well, because Tim has had... Uh, have hit in, in camp as well and a spar with them many 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 rounds um and like i said i still speak to speak to chon and i told him like man you got the goods it's not and there's nothing nothing wrong with your skill set you got the you got what it is to be a champion i always tell him just be you because if he goes out there and, and does what he can do he can beat the best guys in the world but just like tim alluded to you said he, he th there seems to be doubts especially as fights go late like the only thing holding him back is his, is himself and his mindset and his confidence. And even even Chon said that. I, I, I lacked the confidence, I lacked the body language um, to step in there and finish him and the belief that I could do it in the in the Ramirez fight. But he said that's what he took away, that he's gained that. And I think the Pedraza fight and that win only probably helped that. But here he is against a guy in Castaneda where he is cruising, yet can't get him out of there. And the Castaneda is the opposite. Castaneda's got this Uber full, confidence. full belief in himself and his skill set. And, but yet he hasn't been there yet, whereas Chone has. And doesn't check as many of the boxes in terms of his skill set as the Peta does. At least not at this point. I mean, there hasn't even been a punch from Zepeda um, that had anything like, oh, Castaneda is hurt. No. Nope. Or that nope. he's rocked or he's, that he's retreating. Um, albeit, he's winning pretty much every round, no, no, but still, I, I think... Uh, that was a little bit low there, too. Um, I'd like to see him take it up a notch. And Chong actually not doing much this round at all. Well, except getting caught with the left hand there by Castaneda. He's an explosive guy, especially on the inside. He's not a jabber. He's not an outside fighter. He's not a mid-distance fighter. He's an inside fighter. He wants to get inside, and he wants to rip hooks like that. Yeah, right on the money. Exactly as you said, he rips that right hook, and this is where he wants to fight. This is where he has the best success, and Zepeda there landing an uppercut of his own, but Casada standing with him toe-to-toe -to -toe in that moment and having success. And, and, and uh, Kassan, his hand speed isn't bad. He's actually got pretty pretty quick hands. He's got some good power. He lets those, he lets those hooks rip. Mm, got uh, another one right there. He's not afraid to get hit at all. Um, he's right in the pocket. <laughs> Tough, rough kid. Here comes the fight. Not a whole lot of surprises. Oh, come on, baby. It's a good body work there. And again, at the last, you know, 10 seconds of every round, he does well at the ah! shot by... You know, I kind of fought to the level of my competition. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that assessment or that thought in, in this type of fight? When he found out it wasn't Branchek and he wasn't going to be fighting a top 10 guy, I'm not saying that he necessarily stopped training. Of course he didn't, but I, I don't think this is the type of Zepeda we would have seen against that caliber of opponent or that we even saw against Pedraza. I hope not, because this level of competition, if, this, if he has, if he had Branchek in front of him, this would be a really, really tough night. 
uh, for 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 Chong. Um, so fighting to the level of your of your so I think is doing that a little bit. I think it's two different things. I think fighting to the level is one thing where you fight down to your opponent and you know you don't perform. I don't see that here. What I think maybe is is a little bit of a letdown in terms of who okay. you're fighting leading up to it, which may change your mindset stepping into the ring. And I think that's what we're seeing with Chong. Um, he seems like he's thinking a lot. He's worried about cutting cut. He's worried about his performance. He's worried about the next fight, like you had mentioned earlier. Or that's what it seems from my standpoint. Yeah. I'll say. Yeah, I didn't mean to put, put you on the spot on that. It's just sometimes, you know, like I know that I've seen him perform better against much better opposition. Um, and and he, although he's doing well tonight, I just. I was looking for that statement, kind of like you were. Yeah, I just think that Kendo's also uh, is, a, is, a, is a tough guy. I think he's a tough young guy. That you know, the the, the story's not out on him yet. You know, he's only 26 years old. We haven't really seen him at high level. Um, you know, this is by far his 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 biggest test. Although he was quick to say that ta, every ta. the last two guys that he's fought have only fought cab drivers. Hey, hey. <laughs> I thought that that was quite a unique statement coming from. Castaneda considering Zapata's fought two world champions <laughs> and nobody near the level of Kendo's but it's kind of like a line that he just maybe throws out there to help boost his own psyche and, his own me too. and maybe that's what it is maybe it's uh maybe it's by design or maybe it's just like that's the way that he See deludes it. it in his own mind it's to help just, himself it's, it's a little delusional yeah it's, it's maybe uh you know how, why he does it you never know i mean that's one thing about being a fighter being an athlete um, yeah especially a high level athlete your, your self-belief is so important yeah that uh sometimes you gotta lie to yourself well, and we right and, and that's something that we just talked about when it came to zapata your self-belief is so important yep. i mean okay here we go he needs Time some in, of that castaneda self-belief in him within himself maybe he would be performing a little bit better hey when you say king kong ain't got nothing on me you don't really believe that yeah. <laughs> but you say it <laughs> say it with your chest yeah <laughs> puff it out it'll be interesting to hear what Spada has to say in the post-fight interview if indeed he walks away victorious from this fight he seems to be uh far ahead on the scorecards at this point yeah, i got i got uh i gave actually two rounds to test any of the seventh and eighth round um i got Chon actually beating this round. But when Chon is, is, is aggressive letting his hands go, it's it's a, it's very easy to score. But if he's going backwards the whole time and not throwing punches like he did in round number uh, seven, you know, there, there was, you know, it doesn't take much to steal around that. He did a good job of uh, landing there to the body and getting right out quickly, avoiding the counters from Castaneda. That quick footwork that we talked about earlier in the fight. I like what Sean is doing this round. He's being speedy. He's using his skills, hitting, moving, um, and, and using energy. It seemed like he was holding Come on, back, keep him up now. You know, some of the other rounds. Castaneda uh, is just stop, stop, a couple stop, shots. Stop, stop. No, 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 no. Raised no, no. a Stand little up. low on Zapata. Here we go. Keep it clean. As the final 10 seconds Ooh, here, Brown, I get tagged with the right hand to the body from Zapata. Flashes on that hand speed there from Zapata. He's castinated. All right, we'll touch him up here for the last round. Round 10, Christina Poncher, Chris Algieri here with you. A pair of 140 pounders mixing it up here. Former world title challenger Jose Zapata taking on Kendo Castaneda out of San Antonio, Texas. Born and raised. Works full time at FedEx. They are all tuned in to ESPN in the States, watching their co worker get to work in a main event. Essential worker who has right. been working this whole time. Said, I'm keeping service. things moving smoothly for my hometown of San Antonio, Texas. He says that he pushes his co workers because he's got so much energy. He wants to make sure that no one is lazy. He hates laziness, he said. He is right there in the face of Zepeda here in round 10. Great condition. I mean, he says, like, I'm loading boxes. It's, it's manual labor all day, every day. So that probably helps to keep him in good shape, despite the fact that he works, you know, over a 40-hour work week. He looks like a physically strong Zepeda. guy. Absolutely. Does Castaneda. Um, and he's taken all these punches well. Like I said, well. never been hurt in the fight. No. No. Body, head, he's been hit all over. Um, no, against a guy with good power. 25 right. knockouts stop, and 31 stop. wins for Zepeda. You know, I think Zapata is another one of those guys as he stepped up in competition. The knockout percentage has gone way down. Come on, um, keep him up. Keep him up. Here we go. 
was blasting a lot of fighters out early. Right. Ooh, nice clash of heads there. And with his last fight being the tape right over here. 300 days ago, uh, which is the longest inactive period, uh, the good thing about that for Zepeda is it has allowed those cuts and that scar tissue uh, to heal over that eye. So he did talk about the benefit of, stop, of that stop. Uh, because he Don't was go. cut against Pedraza in the 10th round. Uh, of that fight back in uh, September of 2019. And is one of those guys, he fought, he would fight often. And I always he wondered... Will, and he wants to. Yeah, so. and I would wonder about the fit the cuts. I mean, why is this guy getting cut so much? Um, and maybe it is because he didn't have a lot of time between fights to, to heal and recover. Lots of rounds of sparring, lots of fights. Right. And he was scheduled to fight uh, in March, but that fight was canceled because of the pandemic. So that's part of what has led him to... Uh, this long inactive period, 297 days to be exact. Under 30 seconds to go here in round 10. Cepeda cruising at this point. Probably didn't stop, stop. have go. any of the other 140 pounders uh, shaken in their boots and, and we got cut. Oh ah! my goodness, I was just about to say, Skirts out of left. this fight without a cut 